Hey guys, what is up? Dave here with a brand new video series on the channel that I'm actually going to keep up with because this is something I'm very interested in learning more about myself to better my programming knowledge as well as you know helping you guys learn because that was the basis of creating my old channel was teaching people new things about cracking, hacking, programming, and game modding and I wanted to bring that same thing back to my channel and couple years back um, as you can see this is the last time I truly had one of these style series up on my channel where you can see there's there were multiple videos there's episode 2 episode 3 um, there were some other things I used to do video series that were how to do this or how to do that how to program this type of program how to program that kind of program um, and I wanted to bring that back because it's been too long and what I want to teach people how to make is something that's not really hugely readily available to people um, that are in the leaking world. A lot of the stuff that's used for leaking and finding leaks is pretty private because we don't want the stuff patched by uh, companies. We want to basically figure out, um, you know, ways into their stuff and if you know a company one company gets wind of oh this is how they did it other companies might have you know their internal internet security teams check and make sure that the same method doesn't work for their company and boom it's patched before we even get an attempt to get in so i can't decide if i need to turn this down or up anyway um so today's project and series is the start of making what's called a URL fuzzer. URL fuzzer by definition is a program which automatically scans and ignores errors from a URL. So let me give you an example and just no what what is that? No. Notepad, damn it. So a URL fuzzer Let's say you have a URL that's like this, um, url.com slash dl slash one dot zip. Well, let's say you want to check for other versions because this is the only link that exists on the web page. Sure, you can just simply go in and, you know, copy, paste in the address bar and guess too. Or guess zero or even guess another file type why do i keep hearing like wind noises hitting my microphone i don't know if that's coming over for you guys too maybe i should just go back to using my yeti i don't feel like it but um so basically you uh, are guessing URLs and you're doing it with a program instead. And it's not always with numbers, but that's going to be at least how the first episode goes. And then later on, I'll add in like dictionary attacks, different file types by either selecting from a pre-made one or adding in a custom one, um, things like that to that nature, or even how to do a custom URL and stuff like that too, because it's not always going to be HTTP or HTTPS. Sometimes you are going to find URLs that work that for some odd reason, maybe you have the username and password so you can get away with searching an FTP or some other type. I don't think we'll ever need to worry about WSS, which is uh, sockets. That'll never have to be a thing we worry about with this. But um, primarily, this is going to be used for these two. So let's get in on it. So I have some notes to my left from a program that I made for Crossfire, uh, Crossfire Zero, which is a Unity 3D um, based version of Crossfire that's not available in America. I made a URL fuzzer for um, that game to download specifically every file on the website because everything is numbered and that's it. So. I wanted to make a universal version of that program instead of locking it just to Crossfire. And that's where this series got its start and idea. 
So what we're going to do and what you're going to want to do is if you want to follow along and make this yourself, make suggestions in the comments, whatever. Um, obviously, this is going to be completely open source because you're seeing an entire unedited um, video series of it. I'm not going to edit anything. I'm not going to do jump cuts. You're going to see everything. So if you want to make a suggestion on how to do something, how to do something better, definitely leave them in the comments. Feel free to even leave pastebin links if you edit the code and you want me to edit or add it in with, you know, credits given in the future. But for starting this out, we are doing a Windows Form app in C Sharp with, uh, where is it? Windows Form app. You can do a recent project type. That's what I always use. So, um, wait, .NET Core and .NET Framework. Is there a difference? Did I accidentally select the wrong one? Uh, <laughs> oops. Wait, what's the difference? .NET Core. It's still an EXE, right? Windows application. It's still an EXE, right? Like if I just run this. It's going to work, right? Come on. See what I mean by run? It did it as a DLL. Nuts. I started this as the wrong program. Stop. I did this as the wrong thing entirely. I need to start this over. So there is going to be one edit here where I just pause this and make sure I start this as the right kind of program. One second. All right. Since I'm having to start over already, um, create new project. Framework, if you want an EXE. Uh, Windows Form Framework. You can also search it up here. I just didn't realize I clicked the wrong one. And then name it whatever you want. For me, I'm naming it URL Fuzzer Series to remind myself. And you can also select whatever framework you want. I'm just going to leave it at 4.7.2, so this will probably only work on like Windows 8 and 10. Not entirely sure how far back that framework goes, or if you can install it on other uh, stuff. So... Also keep in mind, since I'm using that framework, it's probably only going to be, uh, I really don't know if there's going to be much in the way of code differences for this, but we're going to get started on this now. So the first thing that I want to do is add in all my dependencies up here. So what I'm actually going to do is just copy and paste so I don't miss anything. Because I know I will. Now, the one you're going to see that's very strange is this Microsoft that Visual Basic one. Um, so basically, what I have here is System that Runtime Compiler Services, Microsoft that Visual Basic, System that Net, System that Threading, System that Security that Cryptography. I'll explain that maybe later in a future video. There is a reason for that. Um, System dot IO and System dot Diagnostics. So basically, leave that alone and then just add your first basic function. Um, I will admit 100% that I don't know the difference between public and private. I also don't know static, what that means. So I'm just going to do public void basic fuzzer and then just open close. That's not the right one. And there we go. This needs to be down here so I can hit tab here. And there we go. So we have our first basic function. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to design different tabs. We're going to do this as tabs. And each episode is going to have a new tab expanding on the code, which I think is a really fun idea. Um, we're going to make this a little smaller. Let's say... 450 by 300. Mm. Do 500. Just to make it a little longer, 500 by 350. And sure, not every tab is going to have uh, a whole bunch of stuff in it, but as this gets you know, deeper and deeper into it, it's probably going to have a bunch of tabs 
or I might have to make it bigger. But we need to add first a tab control. And we want to make it, I'm going to make it just as big as the entire, win no, I'm not going to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it, we'll do 485 by, yeah, 256, or 250. I like keeping even number, oh, okay, that's why it's like that. I normally like keeping even numbers. Why did it go back? No, out to here. Why did it go back in on itself? Oh. That's why. Okay. And then what I'm going to do with this space down here is all the credits. So like I said in the beginning of this, if you make any suggestions or change up the code on me and, you know, submit it and want me to edit it and add it to a future video. So basically it'll be another tab and I'll explain the code that you added and stuff like that. Um, all those credits are going to be down here and this is going to be basically the credit section. So I'm actually going to make it 375 just to make sure it's big enough. And I'll probably either do it as a web page that's embedded into this, which is like an iframe in here or whatever, I don't know. Um, or I'll do it uh, just as labels to keep it simple. So we'll figure it out in the future. But right now we're going to set up our tabs. So obviously this is episode one. These are our tabs. We don't need to really modify that. We need to modify this stuff. So this one... Tab page one, you change your text here. We're gonna call this episode one. Basic boy EP one. And then, you know, this will be question mark EP two, because I don't know what we're gonna add in episode two. And what we're gonna do is rename the window to, um, URL fuzzer series high tech X. There we go. And something we can also do to always make sure the program starts with that specific naming is in your public form one, you can just simply do this.txt equals and that's what'll show up. And actually one of my favorite things to do is use this title window to also say what's going on. So like basic fuzzer one, let's do this.txt equals running basic fuzzer. And when you run the uh, function basic fuzzer, it'll say URL fuzzer series by tech X colon space running basic fuzzer. And now we're gonna get, sometimes what you'll wanna do is like this.refresh and that'll make sure that it changes when you run the program if you're not running multi-threading, which is something we'll go over in a future video because I have to remind myself how to do it, which, you know, if anybody in the comments, again, wants to help me out with remembering this shit. Thanks. Um, so anyway, let's get into actually coding the fuzzer because we're, what, like 15 minutes into this and I have coded like four lines of code? Yeah, we're like 14 minutes in. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Anyway, um... So you might have noticed I have Microsoft Visual Basic in this, and that's because I went off of another program I had made in the past that used Visual Basic for this because I couldn't find a good way to do this with C Sharp. I know there are good ways. I know I've coded good ways to do it in the past. I just couldn't remember how to do them. But we're going to do this hard-coded for at least the first episode, and then the next episode we'll start adding text boxes, we'll add buttons, um etc etc so that's what will be the next episode is buttons and shit so first we're going to want to call our variables name our variables so we're going to do string we're actually going to do hold on we're going to do this variables string basic url equals um I need a link for this that actually works, that I know is going to work. We'll just use CF0 because I have that code in front of me. So we're going to do CF0. 
going to put that there and then plus and we'll have to put this variable up somewhere folder num plus min file num plus dot gz i forgot something i'm very burpy suddenly so we need to name these things which those actually need to go first so in folder num equals um i'll just say one int min file num equals one int max file num equals a thousand we'll say just to keep it simple um and then we need to do uh a bool so we need to do bool flag and we need to actually run the damn thing but I want to make sure that there are no others that we need here. File name we need. Cool. String. File name. Equals. Convert. Dot to string. So that takes anything that isn't a string. So for example, we're going to do min file num. Um, since min file num is an integer, as you can see right here, it takes it and translates it and changes it to a string. So it'll be the number one as a string instead of a number. And then we do plus dot gz. And actually to make this easier for learning purposes, we're also gonna do string file type equals dot gz. And we'll do, um, file type there we go so that should be fine yeah that'll be fine cool so we can do also dot file type here and that will run that uh, file right there so that's fine and actually I'm realizing that I might have to do the file name in a different place so file name will just be, we're going to cut that for now. We're going to just do that. File name doesn't exist yet. Don't worry about it. There's a helicopter flying over my house. Um, are there any others? There's another string, but I will worry about that later. Because I think I have to do that elsewhere. I'll just do string my string web resource equals... There we go. And now we have this bool. So I'm going to leave the bool a little bit separate. And I'm going to do a very strange loop for this. Normally you wouldn't do it this way. Uh, there's definitely better ways to do this in C Sharp. But again, this is what community you know, stuff can teach. So we're going to do a do, which is definitely not smart. Try. <laughs> again, not the greatest. Uh, option and what we need to actually do is um so this one goes to there so after the do we actually have to do while flag so that makes it so it's not whatever this is it isn't um and then after the try there is a catch so you do catch web exception ex, and that'll come into a play in a minute. And we do, you know, all of our code there for the web exception. And I think this actually needs to go here. Why is it coming out like that? It's literally right here. Is there another spot that I have it? No, 
There isn't. So this closes the whole freaking thing. Oh, okay. So we know we will need to make one thing on this. We will need to make a checkbox. We're telling it basically, hey, this is running. So let's restart this a little bit here. So we're going to erase this. And we need to add a checkbox. Like I said, episode one is getting our bearings straight and, you know, getting this working to, you know, both learn. So add a checkbox, name it whatever you want, as long as it's in here. Um, run basic fuzzer. And we need to name this. I like doing things as the type of thing they are. So since this is checkbox, I do CV underscore basic fuzzer. And then we're also going to need a button eventually to actually run basic fuzzer. We're going to add a button just, you know, below it, I guess. We'll make it a little bigger. And this will be BTN basic fuzzer start. And this will say start basic fuzzer. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we have that um, checkbox. It's going to be if CB basic fuzzer dot checked. Basically, that means if true, then we do this, then we do the bool flag, then we do the do try and we start adding the code. But now we need to add the catch web exception ex. And after this, we do the, oh, it's because I never named flag. So one thing we're gonna wanna do is add a thread dot sleep. Just do like 50 milliseconds, just so it kinda has a break while it's going through. You can change that number to whatever you want. Eventually it will be randomized because I feel like to bypass some website security, it's smart to make that randomized. And what we have to do is actually tell it what the flag is. So we do flag decimal dot compare new decimal min file num comma max file num zero and then after this we do while flag there we go. Now it's right. I'm sorry it took this long, but like I said, this is going to be an unedited learning exercise for all of us. And now we need to actually add in our fuzzer code. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do, um, so we already got the, str the string file name we need to do. So we're going to do file name dot text. No, we're just going to do file name like that. I'm sorry. Um, and actually something I should do is cut this from here, just do this and do it all within the try. So we're going to do basic URL equals that we're going to do file name equals convert dot to string min file num plus file type and now we make a web client so web client my web client equals new web client so that basically makes a web client so it knows what to look for and you know to call the function web client and we're going to do my string web resource equals basic URL. I don't remember why it has to be added twice, but it does. And we do my web client dot download file. See, there's many different things you can do with that, this, and we'll get into it later. And we want to do my string resource comma file name. 
So how this works is this is the actual URL it's checking. So this is the basic URL here. And then the file name, which is here, this is what to save it as. And that downloads the file. And now we do the catch. That's literally it for the basic fuzzer. What we do now is the catch. And we do HTTP web response because we want to check the responses and we just name it response equals new or equals sorry http web response ex dot response and what we're basically doing is we don't need new here i typed it out of habit from doing stuff like this so what we're basically doing here is coding out different URL error codes. And this will actually allow us to have the program auto skip those errors. So let's say, you know, cf 0 downloadgameonstovecom slash game slash DPMS underscore 174 slash V one slash one dot GZ doesn't exist. It will give a 404 error because it doesn't exist. If it did exist, let's say, uh, or if, since it doesn't exist, that would normally give an error that would actually make the entire program stop and not move forward. But what we're doing is coding out these error codes that would commonly pop up. So since we're coding them out, it'll skip it automatically, it'll know what to do, and we move on from there. So we're going to do HTTP status code equals status code equals response dot status code. Easy enough, right? If status code does not equal HTTP status code dot unauthorized. And actually, I'm going to copy and paste this because this is really annoying. There we go. So basically, this means and. So it's if this does not equal this, and this does not equal this, and this does not equal this. Um, we hit enter, open bracket, close bracket, console dot, console dot write line, ex dot to string, and that puts the exception in a string that'll simply write in the you know output console here eventually in a future video in like tab three or four we'll actually code in a custom console and it'll put the exceptions in there or maybe even export it to a file if you want to see it later um, throw ex and that just throws the console that just throws it away and then what we can also do is console dot write line ignore ex dot to string and that will tell you what things are being ignored and then this what you have to do is add one thing here you need to do min file num plus plus so that tells it every time it goes through this loop until um basically min file number equals max file number so once min file number reaches a thousand it'll stop um, and this does min file num plus itself. So plus one to itself. You can do uh, like custom ones. So you can do like, uh, for example, min file plus five. And you'd have to do it in some like other way. So min file num equals min file num plus five, I think. Yeah, so you'd have to do it that way. But we don't want to go by five. So we want to just plus plus. It's easier. And now that's pretty much done. That's entirely done. So we need to make our button. And what we do is we just add basic fuzzer. That's it. And we hit save. So now we're going to build it. As you can see, it's going to complete the compile because there's no errors in the code. And as you can see here, we have a single exe in here. That's about 10 KB. So we're going to copy that test. We're going to put it in here because it just saves to here. 
We're going to run this. We're going to check the box and go start basic fuzzer. And as you can see, it is downloading files now. And two is a big file, but since this isn't multi-threaded, it's going to go until it stops and there's no way to really stop it unless you like right click close window but even then it might continue <laughs> um so you might have to like task manager close it but again this is what basically uh yeah url fuzzer series since it's not done yet it's not going to allow it to close but as you can see it's it runs successfully it downloads these files and you're good to go so that's the basics on running the URL fuzzer. And the one other thing that we need to do is this.text equals. And what we're going to actually do is take this text string and we're going to make it a global because that's going to be used a lot. So we're going to do string when when title equals. And we want to make it a public so it can be accessed anywhere. I believe that's what public means. I should really read up on this stuff. Um, and we want to remove this. So now we can just do win title. And we can just do win title plus running basic fuzzer win title plus completed basic fuzzer and there you go that's all it takes and you just do a this dot refresh there we go and that's all it takes that's all it takes to make this code work which is pretty awesome that's all it takes to make a basic fuzzer so next episode, we'll actually design a form here in EP2. We'll actually make a form with different text boxes for doing custom URLs and stuff like that. And we'll go from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this first episode is a little sloppy and a little longer than I meant it to be. But again, I haven't done a series like this in years. So I'm going to be a little rusty at first. But I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys are excited for the new series. And I hope you guys are excited to learn something. Because this is definitely going to be a ton of fun for me. For a learning process. Um, anybody who wants to chime in in the future with uh, um, ideas or better ways to code something. Hit me up. Let me know. I am all ears for suggestions at all times. Credits. And what we're going to do real quick is actually code these credits. So we're going to do like 14. And yeah, that's fine. So we're going to just do credits here. And so far, it is just me. I know I can do this in a better way, but whatever. Um, tech X basic uh, idea behind series. There we go. And that's all it'll take. That's how credits are going to be done. Um, I'll also add something for you guys, a little bonus thing. How to make a working URL in um, Visual Basic if you don't already know how. So what we're going to do is HTTPS colon slash slash www.techx.onl slash. And yes, that stretches off screen, whatever. Um, or I'm going to show you guys how to make this work. So lnk url and we're gonna double click and you do process start um and that's really it that's how you make a url work and that should open up in your default browser uh, my default browser is Firefox, so if I click this, it should open. Yep, it opens it in Firefox. So whatever your default browser is, it will open it up. There you go. Basic code of the day. Cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys later. If you made it this far into the video, what is your favorite thing to have for lunch? Your favorite food to have for lunch? Just let me know in the comments down below, and people will wonder why we're talking about food. So talk to you guys later.
Peace out. Probably going to jump right into episode two.